Are we the first civilization in the universe? If you spent your whole life never meeting another human being, you could be forgiven for thinking you're the only one to exist. Likewise, since mankind has never encountered any extraterrestrial forms of life, we have often come to the conclusion that we are, in fact, the only living things in the entire universe. Number 4. The Beginning To discern whether we are the first civilization in the universe, we must first explore how the universe and life came to form in the first place. The universe is estimated to have formed around 13.82 billion years ago, and for the purposes of this video, we're going to split it into four uneven chunks. To begin with, there's the first picosecond of cosmic time. This one trillionth of a second takes us from the Planck epoch to the cosmic inflation, and though we know very little about what went on then, we are pretty certain that, like the time I lost my virginity, it was too short and messy for life forms to have evolved. Next comes the first 380,000 years of cosmic time. In this era, the universe formed elementary particles and the fundamental forces. But since mostly everything was enveloped inside a never-ending blanket of hot, ionized gas, just like the second time I got laid, we think it unlikely life could have formed at this point either. The universe then endured its very own dark ages. The gas lifted, allowing it to become transparent, but large-scale structures were not yet able to form. This age lasted between 150 million and 800 million years. At various points during this third era, the fourth era kicked off, with stars estimated to have first coalesced about 560 million years ago. From here, our universe developed galaxies, clusters, and superclusters, and eventually, nine billion years after the Big Bang, it said hello to our very own solar system. Number three, our home. Our solar system formed when a fragment of molecular cloud mostly comprised of hydrogen started to collapse 4.6 billion years ago. This event formed a huge sphere in the center of the collapse, surrounded by an orbiting disk of material. The sphere became our sun, and the surrounding junk formed our planets, moons, and various asteroids and comets. The Earth is thought to have formed from this material 4.54 billion years ago and it took a further 740 million years before it developed life. Civilization came along relatively recently, with advanced culture and organized society forming between 10 and 20,000 years ago. All this was made possible thanks to Earth's positioning within the habitable zone of our particular type of sun, and based on the fact that we've found no other life forms out there in the universe. We assumed all life would need is to inhabit a Goldilocks zone around a sun similar to ours. But, according to a paper called Relative Likelihood for Life as a Function of Cosmic Time by Abraham Loeb, this may not be the case. Loeb believes life could also form on planets orbiting much weaker, smaller stars. These are called low-mass stars, or opposite max. And while they are less powerful than our own sun, they still emit enough light and heat to form their own habitable zones in close orbit. Planets within this zone can form and retain liquid water. They are more common than our star type, and they last a thousand years longer, too. However, Loeb believes that life will only start to form around these stars in the distant future. He calculated that in 10 trillion years, the universe may have 1,000 times as much life as it does today. This means that the human race currently exists within the earliest days of universal life. We can't be sure we're the very first, but we are at least among them. Either way, mankind has shot its load early, and because of this, we may never meet another living being from another planet. Number 2. The First Generation Our Sun is known as a second-generation star. The cloud from which our star was formed was created by a first-generation star exploding. Basically, the sun is one giant hand-me-down. 
because the universe doesn't love us enough to buy a new one. First generation stars were made directly from ingredients provided by the Big Bang, comprising not much more than hydrogen and helium. They were thought to be massive, powerful, and to have very short lifespans. Until recently, we had never observed such stars, believing they'd burned out and died long ago. But in 2015, a team led by David Sobral of the University of Lisbon claimed to have detected a first-generation star inside a galaxy known as CR7. Named after Cristiano Ronaldo, CR7 is the brightest galaxy ever seen from the time of the early universe. There's no news on whether it will ever get transferred back to Manchester United, but we do think we've detected several first-generation stars within it, stars which formed when the universe was 800 million years old. So, could life have begun around one of these stars? If so, surely civilized life could have followed in the 12 billion years since. Probably not. According to the standard cosmological model, the heavy elements necessary for planet formation had not yet been made. So, unless some unknown kind of life form exists within the center of a star, it is unlikely life or civilization could have developed during this era. Although you'll notice we said it was unlikely, not impossible. Number 1. The First Remember Abraham Loeb? He was the guy from Harvard who thinks that life will be more abundant in 10 trillion years' time. Well, guess what? He also believes life could have formed just 15 million years after the Big Bang, too. He just can't make his mind up. When the universe was a sweet teen dream. It had a cosmic microwave background temperature equivalent to a warm summer's day here on Earth. Within this warm universe, Loeb thinks that rare islands of dense matter may have existed too, which would have enabled the formation of massive short-life stars earlier than we previously thought. In turn, explosions of these stars would have formed heavy elements, and thus, rocky planets could have been born. The warm temperatures caused by the universe's cosmic background radiation would have allowed the formation and retention of liquid water on these planets. This Goldilocks age of habitable temperature would only have lasted for a few million years, though. So, while life could have feasibly developed during this time, it seems unlikely that anything approaching civilization would have had time to form. But what if one of these life-hosting planets just happened to fall under the influence of an expired but still warm first-generation star just as the universe's temperature began to drop off? What if it moved from the universal Goldilocks zone to that of a star, extending its habitability period for millions, perhaps billions, of years? This may sound far-fetched, but so is the accumulation of conditions required for life here on Earth. Given the size of the universe, isn't this scenario at least slightly possible? Based on this, and considering the sheer number of Earth-like planets in our own galaxy, let alone the universe, it seems presumptuous to imagine we are the very first civilization ever to exist. But as we've already deduced, it seems likely we may be one of the first. If so, this means we have some important responsibilities. And we're going to explore some of these in our bonus video, Mankind, the Elders of the Universe, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just upped the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. 
To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.